Pokemon Sword and Shield are just over the horizon, and who better to fill you in than us? Flip that hat backwards and pop a rare candy, because your trainer cred's about to level up. These are all the details you need to know before you dish out your hard-earned Poker Dollars to become a true master. Switch users and Pokemon fans can take a moment to rejoice. The Pokemon company has confirmed that Pokemon Sword and Shield will both be released November 15th. This November release follows five whole years of tradition. The Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu titles were released in November of 2018, and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon came out in November of 2017. Sun and Moon came out in November of 2016, and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire came out in November of 2014. There is a notable difference this time around, however. Pokemon trainers have two different console variations to choose from for their journey. The Nintendo Switch Lite, an entirely handheld version of the Switch console, dropped on September 20th. A little less pricey, and a little more, well, little, the light features a long-awaited standard D-pad and some super cool colors. The standard edition of the light comes in gray, yellow, and turquoise. But for a limited time, a two-tone special edition model will be available for Pokemon fans. Gray with red and blue buttons, the special Zacian, and Zamazenta model features the two legendary Pokemon facing each other on the back of the console. And this year, a new Pokemon journey will begin for all of you. Back when Pokemon trainers were wrapping up their adventures in the Alola region of Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon, there was a pervasive rumor going around. Since the well-received release of the Nintendo Switch, it was only a matter of time until a brand new Pokemon game made its way onto the platform. And it did, kind of, in the form of Pokemon tournaments, but fans were really sure that another game set in Alola was on its way to the Switch. When Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon for the 3DS were announced instead, people were really pretty salty. When would there be a mainline Pokemon game for the Switch? Not until now. It's took a couple more years than expected, but Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield will be the first in probably many mainline games for the Switch. Developer Game Freak confirmed that Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon were the very last Pokemon games for the 3DS, which have been the console of choice for the last eight titles. But according to Game Freak, the platform has been stretched to its limits. The future of Pokemon is on the Switch. The Pokemon games allow their players to travel the world, or at least they sort of do. The first four games' regions were based on different locations in Japan, like Kanto for Red and Blue's, um, Kanto region, which was followed by Hokkaido for Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum Sinnoh. Later regions are based on New York, France, and Hawaii. With Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield, fans were instantly reminded of the United Kingdom upon the reveal of the Gala region. The Gala region looks to be a great island filled with greenery, not unlike the real-life British Isles. The Pokemon Direct described it as expansive. So get ready for a long journey toward becoming a Pokemon master. According to the Pokemon site, the people and Pokemon live together in this region, and they've worked together to develop the industries here. From craggy, snow-covered mountains to steamy brick and metal cities, there are plenty of places to explore on the Gala map. The show stealer of the last generation of Pokemon was the Alolan forms of old favorites. These redesigns switched up the types and appearances of Kanto classics like Raichu, Vulpix, Sandslash, Meowth, and more. Fans then wondered if there would be Gala regional variants in this new generation to better fit the British-esque climate of Gala. A trailer answered everyone's punk rock hopes and dreams by unveiling some Galarian forms packed into Sword and Shield. To match the mischievous Team Yell, cute little Zigzagoon has been reimagined as a hard rock icon. Rather than brown and tan, Zigzagoon and by extension Linoon are now black and white and punk all over with lolling tongues and red eyes. What's more is that Lanoon can now evolve into the bipedal Obstagoon, a Pokemon that looks like it will be going on tour alongside Ozzy Osbourne. Weezing has also gotten the Gala treatment and been transformed into a poison fairy type, called a chimney sweep because Weezing's new look sports two tall smokestacks and smoggy mustaches as an homage to the old smoke itself, London. The same trailer unveiled new rivals, a hangry Pokemon called Morpeka and what's sure to be a lot of exciting battles in store for players. A new region in a Pokemon game means a whole new population of Pokemon to catch, befriend, and battle. Before they make their debut, the designs of these coveted critters are some of Nintendo's most closely held secrets. The starters and their official designs were brought to life in the Nintendo Direct announcement trailer released in February 2019. Trainers met a fire-type rabbit, a grass-type monkey, and a water-type lizard. We first got to meet fire-footed Scorbunny, a rabbit Pokemon that is always running about bursting with energy. Then we saw Shy Sawball, a somewhat timid water lizard Pokemon that shoots out attacks as it hides itself in the water. And finally, Grookey, a mischievous chimp Pokemon that is full of boundless curiosity. As usual, they're all adorable. These three new Pokemon will be hard to choose from. This difficult decision might later be easier when we see what kind of super-powered bruisers these three cuties evolve into. But for now, we want to catch them all.
Although Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu were essentially remakes of Pokemon Yellow, there were many features that differentiated these titles from the mainline series. Rather than picking an elementally based starter Pokemon, players met either a Pikachu or an Eevee, who would then learn special moves and ardently avoid evolving. The Let's Go games pulled some game mechanics from the mobile Pokemon Go as well. Rather than battling wild Pokemon, all players had to do was toss some Pokeballs as a means to catch them. The footage we've seen of Pokemon Sword and Shield so far appears to show that these titles have gone back to basics. When the player walks through tall grass, they'll only see a few wild Pokemon before they encounter them, with some hidden critters popping up and surprising the player. While in Let's Go, players could see all the Pokemon walking around in the overworld. Footage of Sword and Shield suggests that we're back to battling wild Pokemon, weakening them before capture. This supports the classic kind of gameplay that fans may have missed in the last few entries in the series. The Let's Go games did bring back a mainstay that players have welcomed with open arms. Gyms. Pokemon Sun and Moon had traded these familiar tests of strength for trial captains. In the Let's Go games, players fought against some fan-favorite gym leaders, including Brock and Misty. With Sword and Shield, gyms are once again the way that trainers will have to test their metal, but they might not exactly be like the gyms we know from past games. The Nintendo Direct presentation from June 2019 specifically used the word gym, but the design of these challenges have been altered in order to fit the giant Dynamax Pokemon, dotting the map rounded structures that have the distinct look of soccer stadiums. While we don't think this means players will have to participate in a Rocket League-esque minigame to earn badges, we do think that battles will take place in enormous stadiums with an audience to motivate trainers. Remember the days when Pokemon were just a collection of pixels, when Pikachus were a little more plump? The graphics of the Pokemon games have certainly evolved in the last 20-some years. Pokemon X and Y made the jump to 3D, and ever since, the games have continued to build the distinctive look of the world. Pokemon Let's Go gave players a look at their Pokemon on a bigger screen than ever before. Pokemon Sword and Shield is expected to be just as immersive because of the technology of the Switch. However, fans have already taken a closer look at the all-new and pretty amazing graphics of the Gala region. It turns out that Sword and Shield is a different look than Let's Go, despite coming out only a year after. Though the fact that Sword and Shield are mainline entries in the series is likely the reason for the total graphical overhaul. You know what's cool? Pokemon battles. You know what's even cooler? When your Grookey is the size of a six-story building. There's something mysterious and exciting about the Gala region, and they're called Dynamax Pokemon. Similar to Mega Revolution, Pokemon get temporarily oversized and overpowered through this mysterious force. The temporary transformation makes them big, with special max moves. This makes for rather tremendous gym battles. Gyms are specifically built with Dynamax Pokemon in mind, and there are a few areas in the games that will support Dynamax transformations. That said, throughout the map are areas marked in red. These beacons drawing trainers who want to band together in order to take on a Dynamax Pokemon and try their luck at catching it. Sound familiar? Players of Pokemon Go will recognize this formula as your everyday raid battle. In Pokemon Sword and Shield, these are called Max Raid Battles, wherein real players can team up to bring down a big bad wild Pokemon. Although Pokemon Sword and Shield don't deviate entirely from the usual formula, they have added new mechanics made possible through the power of the Nintendo Switch. You know all that open-world goodness Nintendo graciously gave us with The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild? The new games feature a little taste of what it would be like to run free, unconstrained by set paths and predetermined routes. Forget the Safari Zone, the world is your cloister. In the wild area, players are free to wander and encounter wild Pokemon. Players are able to control the camera themselves to seek out items, other trainers, and of course the Pokemon, who are also free to roam around. The types of Pokemon that appear depends on the weather, which changes day to day. The wild area connects several towns together, the landscape gradually changing. Players can experience everything from snowfall to sandstorms as they explore the open world. When trainers wander in the vast wild area, what do they do when it starts getting dark? Apparently set up camp. As an all-new mechanic similar to Pokemon Ami, players of Pokemon Sword and Shield can camp out under the stars of their Pokemon team. During this time, they can pet and play with their Pokemon and make some curry, a staple of Japanese and Indian cuisine, also very popular in the United Kingdom, which Gala is based on to share. Pokemon Camp is also a great place to cook up a dish that is very popular in the Gala region. Curry on rice. In addition to this adorable new feature, the September Nintendo Direct revealed that players will be able to be as stylish as they like. Sword and Shield feature unparalleled customization for the player's avatar, allowing them to dye their hair, try on wide-ranging outfits, and even change their eye color with never-before-seen color options. We are also blessed by the presence of a new fan-favorite ghost type, Poltygeist. Yes, it's a ghost in a teapot, and yes, we love it dearly. Cramorant, a bird Pokemon who attacks by hacking up fish at his enemies, was also introduced, and while he was not nearly as adored as Poltygeist, we're super stoked at the idea of projectile vomiting fish at our better rivals. 
Thanks to the Nintendo Direct preceding E3 2019, we finally learned what the sword and shield in the titles are. The legendary Pokemon Zacian and Zamazenta. They are two fierce armored wolves decked out in blue, red, and gold. They seem to have a somewhat antagonistic relationship. Or maybe they were just engaged in a friendly battle when we saw them in the trailer. Zacian wields a sword in its mouth, lacking any apparent thumbs. Internet jokers quickly riffed on this idea almost immediately, comparing the otherwise regal Pokemon to dogs with knives and the Dark Souls boss Great Grey Wolf Sif. Zamazenta does doesn't hold a shield so much as it is a shield. The Pokemon is covered in golden plating that snaps together at the first sign of danger. Zacian is described as having the ability to cut through anything, while Zamazenta can force back any blow. We're still waiting on word of what third legendary, as if traditional with mainline Pokemon games, would stand opposed to them. According to the official Pokemon site, not even the people of the Gala region are aware of these two nightly wolves' existence. Which, let's be honest, is kinda hard to believe. How do you miss this? Not everything about Sword and Shield is all rainbows and ho-hos. Some are saying that Nintendo managed to crash its hype train via the revelation that not every Pokemon will be able to make it to the Gala region. While yes, fans are definitely excited for the brand new batch of Pokemon that the games have to offer, they're still attached to their old favorites. All games previously had allowed for various ways to import previous generations of Pokemon into the newer games. But Pokemon Sword and Shield might just break with this tradition, much to the ire of veteran players who can't get enough of the originals. Producer Junichi Masuda broke hearts when he said that only Pokemon from the Gala region will be available in Sword and Shield. Why? Well, animating nearly 800 Pokemon will put an undue strain on designers. Still, fans are miffed, upset that their favorite Pokemon might be excluded from the newest incarnation of the game. Briefly, the hashtag BringBackNationalDex made their anger known on Twitter. Gala is kind of sort of based on Britain, and upon realizing this, everyone and their grandmother immediately assumed that somewhere in these new games would be a corgi. The Queen of England has an impressive collection of the adorable little dogs, so it would follow that the Welsh breed would be adapted for the world of Pokemon. Well, wouldn't you know it? A seemingly credible leak posted before the first Nintendo Direct mentioned a corgi Pokemon named Pampa. That turned out to be a little off the mark, but it was pretty close. Yampa is an electric-type Pokemon that looks strikingly like a fluffy butt corgi. Players were delighted to discover this good boy during the E3 demo of the games. Sure, Yampa might have won the affection of fans far and wide, but it's not the only new Pokemon to melt our cold, cold hearts. Wooloo still seems to command the hearts of prospective players with its round, cute design, and as more Gala Pokemon appear, there are sure to be new contenders for the internet's favorite new Pokemon. Each new game comes with new friends and enemies to befriend and battle. The neighbor kid is always conveniently the same age as the player, ready to set out on their own adventure at the exact same moment that the main character is. What a coincidence! In the new games, Hop is the player's frenemy to the end. His older brother Leon is the undefeated champ of the whole Gala region, something of a celebrity and sure to be a difficult opponent when the player finally faces him down. The Pokemon professor this time around is Professor Magnolia, who looks like she would appreciate a herd of Yampas herself. She and her granddaughter Sonia study the Dynamax Phenomenon. Sonia also clearly studies fashion, with her manicured nails and heart-shaped hair barrettes. The real show stealer so far, however, has been Nessa, the water-type gym leader. As soon as she appeared, fan artists went to work. She has cerulean blue eyes and stripes of aquamarine in her hair, as befitting a water-type trainer. The fandom seems to have wholeheartedly embraced her, along with, of course, the other new friends waiting for them in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Another recent trailer has proven that the new games will be bigger than ever. Game Freak is going all in on the Dynamax phenomenon and has revealed a further discovery in the world of Pokemon, Gigantamaxing. In battle, Pokemon can become bigger than ever, and this comes with its own transformation. In the trailer, a newly debuted fairy-type Pokemon, Alchemy, went from a dollop of whipped cream to a multi-layered cake that would even make the most jaded baker bulk. Gigantamaxing and its added animations might account for the concerns that designers cited as a reason behind the apparent exclusion of the entire Pokedex. Veteran fans are still rankled that their favorite Pokemon may not be able to come along with them to the Gala region, where Pokemon can get Gigantamaxed and attack with a special G-move. Fans were reassured by the Gigantamax trailer that old favorites Tyranitar, Gumi, and Mimikyu were making a Return. The Pokemon Company revealed some new faces alongside Alchemy as well. The Pokemon Roly Coley, and Dan, and gym leaders B and Alistair. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more SVG videos about your favorite games are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.